you look at many, many, uh, uh, the countries that we always envy, mm. the Singapore's, the Denmark's, the Norway's, the Nordic mm. countries, the US, mm. and the UK is doing that. Yeah. You'll find that universities are, they are not, they are not centers of issuing certificates. Mm. They are centers for knowledge. They are centers for ideas, mm. centers for revolutionary thinking and revolutionary sure. not in the sense of blood of blood and violence and whatever but revolutionary in the sense of like we need to do things differently mm. where ideas boil ideas cook and then something emerges but mm. our universities if you look at them i mean they're still stuck in the same archaic system yeah we still want to uh, examine people uh there's nothing wrong with examinations but why mm. can't we why, why can't we, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Why can't we be innovative? Mm. Why can't we be innovative, especially especially when you're talking about STEM subjects? Yeah. I mean, you can't teach STEM mm. uh, 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 today in 2024 the way you've been teaching STEM in, in <laughs> Since 1960. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 not, it's not going to work. Mm. Yeah, so uh, so I think uh, if universities refuse to accommodate new ideas, yeah, then uh, platforms like these ones, or even independent institutes, will emerge. Thank you, everyone who's joined us today. If you are new here, this is my science journey, biweekly webinars where we invite scientists to come and share their science experiences, their science journeys just so that we can learn from each other and share experiences together. So um, if you're joining us, please um, comment on the chat where you're joining us from, just so I can know which countries are well represented. And as more people join, I'll encourage everyone to see where they're joining us from. And today we are joined by the one, the only Victor Oria. And very excited, very excited, looking forward to an engaging conversation with you all. And to kick us off, Victor. Yes. I would like to know. So yesterday I was going through your X profile. That's your Twitter profile. Mm -hmm. And on your bio, one of the labels is Democracy Vigilante. What, what, what do you have to say about that? What is the inspiration behind that title? Uh, so I'm a political animal. I love politics, mm -hmm. and uh, and I love politics because, I mean, everything in the world revolves around politics. Politicians make decisions on how much money to spend on education, on health, on mm -hmm. wars, mm -hmm. on agriculture, on food, name it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, and it, this is just my. I'll, I'll start by encouraging everyone to be very political. Being okay. political yeah. doesn't mean that you uh, you're abusive or insultive or like you know you don't have a mind of your own, mm -hmm. but it helps you understand how the world works. Yeah, yeah. So everything around the world is uh, about politics. Mm -hmm. And uh, but to come back to the thing about democracy, vigil vigilante. So vigilante mm -hmm. comes from the word vigilance. Mm -hmm. So being vigilant is being aware of your surroundings and what's happening around in your country or on the continent and whatever. Mm -hmm. And since democracy is one of the form of governments that my country aspires uh, 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 to work under, so I call myself the democratic vigilante. Because mm -hmm. I just try to uh, uh, make sure that I follow up what the government is doing and I try to ask questions uh, whenever uh, 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 things that I don't understand or I disagree with come up. Mm -hmm. and, um, they always say that democracy dies in the darkness. And that darkness, it simply means lack of vigilance. If we just let people, uh, uh, elect people, let them, okay, you run the country the way you want. Mm. I mean, you've been following the events happening in Kenya and you're always seeing this scandal after this scandal after this scandal after this scandal. Yeah. If people didn't spend their time unearthing these things, then we would not know. Uh, mm. uh, uh, the state of the country. True. I mean, even right now, we still even don't know uh, 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 the the debts that we accrued as a nation over the last ten years, where they actually went. Mm -hmm. and that's part of the public conversation that we hear on Twitter spaces, radio stations, television stations. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, just if you just walk into a bar and people are having a political discussion, those are some of the things that you'll hear. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, one of the reasons why we aspire to uh, 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 be like Singapore, be like, you know, the Nordics, the UK and blah, blah, is because, I mean, everything is open. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that they're perfect countries, but they have tried as much as possible to make sure that things that are of public interest are in the light so that mm -hmm. everybody can access them, everybody can know what is happening. If we say we've invested 100 million in a hospital, we need to see what that 100 million has done. Mm -hmm. Not 100 million on paper, and then you go there and there's, there's nothing to show for it. Yeah, for sure. so that's the, yeah. uh, uh, that's the, uh, 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 the motivation, or the inspiration behind my level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think you live up to it because I was looking at some of your tweets and how you're very vocal about holding the systems to account. Yeah. So I think you live up to the title as well. But moving slightly away from that, now that you mentioned you're from Kenya, um, maybe you could, for our audience, you could introduce yourself and tell us a bit about mostly your educational and professional background or your science journey in your own words. Ah, uh, okay. It's always very tough to do this because yeah, I you always get <laughs> something. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I'm Victor Oria. Uh, like Anita said, I'm I'm Kenyan. I come from Kisumu County, Nyakach constituency, West Nyakach ward, Kagum village. So I know up, up to the very bottom. Uh, and my science, my scientific journey basically started at Kenyatta University, uh, where I pursued a, a degree in biochemistry. And then I did a, a bit of uh, internship at Kemri, uh, mostly virology. But I was, it was an interesting thing to do. But then uh, I saw there were too many of us. And I was always asking myself, why can't I see people doing something else? Because virology or even microbiology, uh, and I understand it because during that period, those were some of the diseases that were affecting Kenyans mostly. So you're either dealing with aboviral, diseases or you're dealing with malaria or tuberculosis or some uh, um, waterborne and diarrheal diseases and so on. So it was necessary. But then everybody was studying microbiology and uh, virology and, you know, TB, malaria. And I was just like, no, I think I need to do something different. So after I finished my, uh, my degree at KU, I got a Commonwealth scholarship. I went to the UK to a village university, I call it that, but it's also the only university with an airport. So, you know, it's called Cranfield. It's close to Milton Keynes for those in the UK. And there I studied medical diagnostics because uh, I was now interested. Uh, uh, so before that, I wanted to get into the industry, mostly like, you know, as a sales, sales rep and whatever, so I went to a couple of interviews with some diagnostic companies and those, it was really interesting to me because this is something that I had never learned, I would never knew existed. And especially uh, if you go through our system, you never knew anything existed beyond your Camry, Kefris, Calro, Ilri, Isipe. Those were the only things that you knew. So that was an eye opener. So then I decided, okay, what I'll do, I'll try to find a course that uh, actually um, fits this interest that I have. And then uh, I'll come back and maybe, you know, join one of these companies at a higher level and then maybe build up my career there. So then I went to the UK. I did my uh, an MSc in, a, in a medical diagnostics. So this was like a one year, really, really, you know, the one year programs that they have. So you study for six months and then you have six months uh, for doing your research. And it's during the last six months when I was doing my research, I went to the Open University because I there was a project there on treating cancer using light. And that intrigued me. So I was curious about this and I was like, you know, what's the worst that can happen? And that's how my journey in cancer started. So I went there and I, I, I was working on, I worked on a project that was trying to harness the power of light. So something called photodynamic therapy, which is mostly used for treating horses with cancer. But now they were trying to bring it uh, and, and they were trying to bring it into human, uh, into human studies and see whether it could be applied into the clinic. And uh, I worked under uh, Professor John Golding. I don't know if he's still at the Open University or something. 
yeah, and it was really, really, really an enjoyable six months. And I was like, I think I'm hooked. This is what I, I really want to do with my, I really want to do with my life. So anyway, so after that ended, I came back to Kenya. And then I went to the Technical University of Kenya. I, 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 I was there as a tutorial fellow for one semester. And uh, there were good and bad experiences there. Let me just leave it at that. Uh, and I was like, I don't think I can do this. So luckily enough, uh, I, I got uh, 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 approached by um, someone from Isipe. They needed somebody to do to set up a cell culture lab um, uh, or to help set up a cell culture lab system at one of their laboratories. And because I had a lot of experience with that, I went there. So I spent about nine months there. And I mean, it was, uh, you know, you know, the issues with Kenya, because we are so far away from where all these things are manufactured. So if you have to order reagents, you need to maybe uh, uh, order three months in advance so that they can be shipped collectively. Yeah. So, I mean, most of the time it was about just because it was a new lab. So, and it, it had a couple of master's students. So it was more about learning, just trying to understand how the system works. Uh, 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 there were uh, uh, trainings on bioinformatics, biostatistics, and so on. And then I was just like, no, I think I like cancer. I don't, I don't think I want to come back to uh, 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 this virology thing. So anyway, so from there, I applied for a, a, a funded PhD scholarship at the University of Freiburg. So I, I, I was lucky enough to be one of the recipients uh, the year 2015, 2014. Um, it, 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 it was this multinational uh, uh, funding that, you know, picked uh, people from different parts of the world because they also wanted to have like a, 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 an, an integrated system not just a monolithic system. Yeah, so it was a very exciting moment. So I went to the University of Freiburg in uh, 2014, late 2014, around October. And there I did a PhD in molecular medicine, but my focus was primarily on two things, cancer biology. So just doing the basics, understanding how, like, you know, uh, 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 the biology of cancer. And here I was most, mostly focusing on pancreatic cancer. And then uh, the second part was clinical proteomics. So a bit of technology to it. So I spent four years there. Uh, it was very, very exciting, I learned a lot. Uh, uh, and I was always like, I just wish, you know, you know, like when you're in this aha moment and you're like, why can't we just do this in Kenya? And then you, you watch the news and you hear 5 billion has been lost in Kimwarera or Dam, and you're just like, why can I mean these things? We can do them. It's not like we don't have the money. We have the money to do them. So anyway, so I finished. I finished my PhD, and at the end of the PhD, every student will tell you that um, you are always tired and fatigued. You are always tired and fatigued, and you're like, I think I'm done with the research. So I went to Kenya. Uh, I went to Kenya in uh, uh, in November, and actually before that. Uh, I had done a postdoc application, only one, because I was like, I'm done, I'm going home, I'm tired of the cold, of the bad food, and, and you know, sucks. everything. And then he's yes. in there. Somebody's talking? Sorry, sorry, I think someone unmuted by mistake. I've muted ah, them. Just okay. go on. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So before that, just before I'd finished my PhD, when I was like in the final steps of finalizing, I saw this. I was on Twitter. I don't know what I was doing. And then I came across a study done by Yale Medical School. It was on uh, some new way of imaging neurons in the brain. And I was just curious. So I was reading that. And then at the bottom, you know, there's always these jobs at Yale. So I clicked on that. And there was this nice advert from a lab. And, uh, and I mean, you know, as a child growing up in Kenya, we were always told, Oh, you need to go to Harvard, Stanford, Yale, and blah, blah. You know, those big, the American thing in us Kenyans, you know it, yeah? So I was like, you know, Victor, just do this application. I know you will not get it, but just do it. One day you will tell your children that, you know, I once applied to Yale, but they never responded. So anyway, I finished my PhD, then I went home and I was like, 
I'm going to build a house. So I started building a house in my village. I was there throughout that whole process of like digging the foundation. I was, you know, interacting, like I was physically doing it. Not like I was seated somewhere and I was there with the fundis and the contractors and everyone. We were just doing it together. And then in the midst of that, I get a call from uh, uh, this professor from Yale. Who had a, uh, and say, yeah, I really liked your CV. I like the projects you're doing. And I look at your skill sets. It's probably what we use here. So would you like to come? And I was still like, um, yeah, let me talk to my family first. So every friend of mine I told that, oh, I got this thing from Yale, but I'm still thinking about it. They were like, what is wrong with you? We will take you there physically. Anyway, so I went to Yale in February 2019. So four months after my PhD ended. And it was really, really, really enjoyable. That's one of the very best people I've worked for. Yeah, America itself is a interesting country with, uh, yeah, it's, it's so big. Yeah. So at Yale, I worked on uh, something called melanoma. So melanoma is a type of a skin, a skin cancer that are, uh, affects the melanocytes. And uh, one of the places it spreads to is the brain. So this lab was specifically focused on melanoma brain metastasis. Uh, it was also a, a very exciting moment for me, learning new things, being in a medical school and seeing how a medis, medical school runs, you know, where you have a, you have a hospital, it's a teaching hospital, but it's also embedded with uh, lectures and also embedded with research seminars and also embedded with research and really, 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 really strong research. So you have people working on melanoma, you have people working on renal cancers, people working on brain tumors, people working on lung cancers. And that, I mean, the spirit is very competitive, but it's an American thing, but it's still very collaborative. And you can see the amount of money that even industry pours into that hospital because industry knows that the real answers for, if, I mean, all these medi medicines that we, 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 we consume, whether it's for cancer, whether it's malaria, whether it's, it didn't start in an industry lab. Very few of these start in industry labs. They actually start in university labs, medical hospital labs. That's where these things start. Yeah. So I was there for two years and uh, uh, then COVID came, you know, and then America is just far away from the world. And uh, my wife then was, uh, was in Europe. So, uh, and because of the travel ban by Trump, uh, she couldn't really come. So I was like, yeah, I, I need to leave this place. So then from there, uh, I, I, uh, I spoke to a, a PI that I knew uh, based in Denmark. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I enjoy what I'm doing here in America, but my partner is in Europe. And America now with the politics and all the gun crime and whatever, I don't think it's really a space where I want to be right now. So maybe uh, I can come in for like, you know, a year and then maybe we can apply for some funding. And oh, of course, he was like, yeah, uh, let's see what we can do. So then I arrived in Denmark uh, in the midst of Corona. So April 1st, 2021. Uh, and then from there, I applied for, for a Marie Curie uh, uh, fellowship that is used. It's money given by uh, the EU to an institution. And so currently I'm part of what is known as uh, Marie Curie Research Leadership Fellowship. So they are trying to train the next generation of, uh, of research leaders, and they don't care whether you stay in academia or you go to industry or you go and start your own thing. It's just to train you to be like a, a, a thinker, a research leader in your field and grow on from there. So, so that's what I've been doing uh, for the last uh, three years. And uh, uh, so I came up here with uh, some of the research I was doing at Yale, where we were looking at melanoma brain metastasis, but uh, a very specific aspect of it. So my current research now is on tumor vasculature. So I'm trying to understand how the vascular system supports tumor growth uh, and how it also allows the tumors to spread to, to distant organs. So that's what I'm currently doing here at the University of Copenhagen. I hope it was not that long. No, not quite 
it was very engaging. That's the thing. You have a yeah. way of making science sound very engaging and very interesting. And now you're making me wonder if maybe I should get into cancer research as well. <laughs> but thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for walking us through your journey from your undergrad in biochemistry in KU up until now where you're working with tumor vasculature at mm -hmm. the University of Copenhagen and all that in between. But I think there, there are many things we can pick from that, but what I would want us to um, talk about a bit more is how you knew about all these opportunities. So for example, um, you mentioned that you applied for the Commonwealth Scholarship. So I'm assuming that one is, that is, it's very much publicized enough for people to know about. But then you mentioned that in the middle, after six months, you went to, um, you worked with a professor from the Open yeah. University. And then there was also the the um, the PhD scholarship from the University of Freiburg. Mm -hmm. And then at least for the Yale one, you mentioned you saw it on Twitter, but then there's also this current one, which is the Marie Curie Research Leadership Fellowship. So just all these opportunities of growth, how, um, were you able to become aware of them? And how can someone become aware of such opportunities? I mean, uh, so if I start with the Commonwealth Scholarship, I mean, uh, there is the commonly non-Commonwealth Scholarship. There's the Chevening Scholarship, the British, British Council one. But this one was a very interesting one. It was called the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship Scheme. And I mean, they advertise it through the normal, the normal uh, uh, outlets that they do. So, yeah, but I, I think I, I, I don't want to sound arrogant or whatever, but mm -hmm. I think it's, it's more about knowing what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I jump uh, ahead a bit now to where I am right now, I receive a lot of emails from students who want, oh, I went through your CV. Would you please mentor me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then, and then you're like, okay, please send me your CV. And for, for for some of them, you're just like, I mean, if you send me this CV, mm -hmm. it's unstructured, it is full of spelling mistakes. I'm just like, you're not prepared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the world is so busy, people are so busy, they want people who give them easy time. And I always I always have this CV, or or at least back then I used to have a CV and a cover letter written ready. Mm -hmm. So in case I came across anything. It was just a matter of editing and fitting, fitting for that purpose. I mean, mm -hmm. recently I was looking for, uh, I was looking for a, 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 like a graduate student to mentor through a, a project that I had. And some, I mean, it was a cancer project and somebody applied, but they're doing something in agriculture. <laughs> so you, you, you see the disconnect. Yeah. So, so, so. I, and I know it's, it's, it's our culture. It's our Kenyan culture. You know, you remember even in, in, in campus, somebody is doing biochemistry, but they're doing CPA on the side. They are doing uh, computer things. Like, we come out of the Maisha. We want to try our hands at everything. Why don't you just pick one thing that you like and focus on it? And then you'll get better at it. And opportunities, I will say, they're always there. So some of these opportunities, like say, for instance, the uh, 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 my PhD to coming to Germany. That's also a very, very funny story. It's a university I never wanted to go to. Yeah, but it's where I ended up in. And uh, uh, one of my best friends is the one who actually told me, oh, but there's a graduate school here. Uh, and I know that they, they are always looking for PhD students. And they have this because it's uh, in Germany, they have uh, uh, what they call centers of excellence. So there are about maybe 12 to 15 universities across the country in Germany that have got have established these centers of excellence, especially for life sciences. Because if you know Germany, Germany is a engineering country, the Mercedes, the Bosch, the Siemens and whatever. So they also want to catch up in the, in the life science, biotech, biology industry. So they built this or they awarded these centers of excellence to several prestigious universities so that then they could invite uh, academics from all over the world to build uh, uh, research in, uh, in, uh, in uh, specific niches. Yeah, so he sends me this email uh, uh, at night that, oh, by the way, there is this graduate school. Can you apply? So I went to the link and I just read through it. It, it was a lot, but I took my time, went through it, read it, and I just wrote an email to the graduate school coordinator. And I'm like, okay, what should I do to 
and then they take you through that. And uh, and this is also something that you know I I I I I, I see a lot in people. I'm also going to be a, a little bit not sound arrogant, but you remember the issue of Finland, the Finland scandal in, in Wasingishu. So I'm on a Twitter space, I'm listening to these students complaining that they were conned and blah, blah. Some of them saying that, oh, I arrived in Finland and I realized that they don't speak English. So didn't you do your due diligence before? So what I'm trying, what I'm coming at is, Akuna kitu raisi, there's nothing easy. You have to put in the work. Yeah, you have to put in the work. It means sitting down, taking maybe even an hour or two every day after work or after you've done your, your stuff. You come sit down and like, okay, I want to go to this university. What do they do? Like, what, what's or I want to join this lab. Yeah, because if you want to join a, a lab here, for instance, like our lab, yeah, we work on uh, metastasis, tumor microenvironment, tumor vasculature. Uh, recently, we've been also we've been uh, we've been uh, 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 trying to hire some new uh, scientists to come and join us. And I mean, you see some of the applications, and you're like, didn't he really read what we are doing? So if you if somebody is working on cancer and you're working on on viruses, or if I'm working on pancreatic cancer but you're interested in breast cancer, I mean, we those are two different things. So spend your time, know uh, 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 where you want to go know uh, uh, the available resources that are there. And I always tell uh, uh, everyone who asks me this, in this country, or where we are, or at least based from my experience, every time I've wrote an email to the university administrator, to the graduate school coordinator, to a, a professor somewhere, to a team leader somewhere, where I'm interested in finding some information, they've always been very positive. Because you go straight to the point, yeah? You know what you want, so just write the email in a very polite way. Ask, go straight to the question. How do I go about applying for this? Or what are the available resources that I can help a student from Kenya or Uganda or Tanzania? Yeah. And by the way, if there's anybody here uh, uh, who doesn't know, at the University of Freiburg in the Department of Environment, there, there are scholarships to East African students. Who are, who are interested in studying environmental governance. I don't know if it's still going on, but when I was there, it was it, a lot of it was there. And I know many Kenyans and Tanzanians who came because it was specifically meant for people from that area. So just go to this uni that any university you are interested in joining and just take your time. It's the websites are as navigable as Kenyatta's or Nairobi or MKU or Kibabi or Kirinyaga you'll find every information you need there. And if you're stuck, there's always uh, something there. If you need any inform any further information, kindly reach to so-and-so, they will help you, yeah. So for me, you just get this information, either somebody shares them with you, or you just come across them from the internet. You, sh you should just know where to look, yeah.